All right, it is Beaver Builder time. We are looking here at a site that already has a Beaver Builder set up. It has Beaver Themer installed. And uh, if you're not familiar, Beaver Builder is a free plugin. Beaver Themer is uh, a paid um, solution that you end up uh, uh, getting from Beaver Builder people uh, when, when you want to leverage some really awesome features. Right now, I'm actually, I'm using the Beaver Builder Pro um, plugin. Uh, there's the light version, which is free, and the pro version that does cost as well as the Beaver Themer it comes alongside of your um, your pro offering. So let me go and jump into this. I'm looking right now at a page I built. The same exact, uh, all of this stuff, again, is going to be the same stuff I was doing with the first example. So I, I want a, a favorite book of 2020, and then I want to have uh, the actual single view of that. If you look at the way that the single view works for the page, the, the block editor, uh, it's it's very simple. Um, it, it's it, you've got the title, you've got the featured image, and and you can output some stuff in there. But but when it gets down to it, block editor is really restrictive in terms of customizing the way that your singular templating will look. Um, unless you set that up from PHP and you do a bunch of extra work, it's not very easy. So using a solution that's already built like this. Beaver Builder lets you do some really cool things. As part of the editor, for when I'm editing this page, I can go into edit it, and you'll notice I'm, I'm using Beaver Builder right now. So I'm gonna go to launch the Beaver Builder editor. And once I'm in the editor, it looks just like the front end did. So I'm actually on the front end while I'm editing, which is nice. And then I can see I've got a heading here, I've got another heading, and then here we have a module. And I'm using right now, there was no easy way to just list one item. So I am using the post module from within uh, the Beaver Builder context. And I'm using a custom query. And I'm using um, the books post type. And I've chosen to filter it by a specific book. So I just wanted it to show me the Republic and other works uh, book. So I, I've, I've manually selected it here. And layout is quite simple. We're using um, the basic post layout, so I'm, I'm able to show or hide that image. And as you see here, if I hide it, it'll go away. And I can show it again. And so I'm just managing all that interface right here. It's, it can be very simple, but at the same time, a little bit tricky because you may want to customize it. So what happens when you try to customize it a little bit further? I want to list things like custom fields and such. Uh, when I'm using pods, I can leverage some really great pods features like our, our short codes. So there's a short code here for the pods. Uh, I'm using just uh, the book author field. I want to output who the, the author was. And uh, everything else is the same. I'm using the same layout as the normal default post block uh, would use. And then you can get deeper into that and say, what if we want to do things a little bit differently and use the templating? Like we we saw that used inside of the block editor earlier um, with pods. You can actually use this pods shortcode and it supports shortcodes within it, which is great. And it allows us to leverage the magic tags within our shortcode for pods. And I can say book author and publication date and I can add my HTML and everything else around it. but. It's all powered by that short code, and I can use these things that we call magic tags and pods. So this is very helpful when you're building with Beaver Builder inside of uh, uh, the pods context. You've got pods information, you've got a pod itself. This will pull based off of the current pod item in the loop. So it knows it's in the loop, and it's going to go ahead and do its thing. Uh, so it's not normally if you would do this inside of a page itself it would show information about that page. But because we're using the post layout and we're using the post module, it knows that you're in that loop and it will pull that data from that context. So it's it's, it's already aware of those things. So that that's really nice, it, it just does that for you. And then um, I just wanted to show a quick example of how to use the widget. So you can actually use widgets inside of Beaver Builder. Uh, look at all these modules that are available, just tons. And you can switch over here to WordPress widgets and pull in a widget from another plugin that's already been built, or um, in, in this example here, we're using the pods widget. And uh, again, I'm just using a very simple template. Uh, I'm, I'm actually even using the, the same 
classes and, and, and elements that Beaver Builder was using for its post layout. So it, it looks very, very much similar, uh, but not the exact same because some of the containers on the outside, which hold that post, uh, when you're looking at this, this whole thing is a container and it's holding it in there. Um, and it, that container is styled based off the post module. So this is a little bit more simpler and it, it's still using some of the elements. Uh, and, but, but for the most part, it's allowing me to do a lot more in terms of easy build, like easy use. Like I, I can call these magic tags and I don't have to worry about all of the extra short codes, remembering what does the short code, um, what is it, what is the short code for the post title in Beaver Builder? I, I can just use that all within pods context. So it takes care of a lot of that stuff and it's kind of nice. Um, but that's how I ended up doing this for the books. And ACF is very similar. Uh, again, though, ACF itself is, is, is focused around fields. It's not focused around builder kind of stuff. So you can do a lot of stuff with PHP, tons of stuff with pods, ACF, and custom fields built totally outside of that context. But pods includes a lot of things that are for builders um, where you have, we have templating, we have auto templates, so you can automatically assign templates for singular views and stuff like that. ACF doesn't have some of those things that are um, nice to have and, and it relies on a lot of plugins, which are great that do it for it. So that's really nice that they've kept the focus there. Um, you'll notice that I am using the same structure as before for ACF as I was using for pods for a post module. So I'm using the ACF post here and I've chosen that, that demo book over there. And uh, we're actually using a new uh, plugin out there that's called Easy ACF Connector. It, is, it allows us to do a custom layout just for that. Um, let's go ahead and look at that real quick. So custom layout. And uh, I'm able to reference those fields because I can click into this. And this is something you'll see for pods and for ACF and also for just regular um, posts. You'll see the ability to insert and connect. You can connect something and that will tie the entire item, the all layout into just the value of whatever that is. But you can insert it and it will insert a short code. And from the ACF context, there are now um, ACF uh, connections and insert um, fields that you can do from ACF's integration within Beaver Builder. Pods has some too. Uh, and these are added from our Pods Beaver Builder uh, plugin uh, for Beaver Themer. And then Easy ACF adds one as well. And this one's really nice because it just lists out the fields that you want to choose from. And then you can insert them. Uh, and let's go back and show that ACF view here. So if you were to insert an ACF field, you have to choose first what field type it is. That's not the best, uh, but uh, sometimes it, you can make it work if it's not too uh, difficult to remember everything. And uh, you can just type in the field name and then it would then insert that right into the place you had it. So uh, it would do, for the most part, a lot of the work for you, except in this case. So I actually have an array returned here. So this is important to note because ACF itself, if I go into it and I look at the author and I look at what it's returning, I'm returning the post ID and the way that this ends up coming through for Beaver th Themer and Beaver Builder is not particularly easy to work with from the shortcode context on this side. So that's a gotcha. You're gonna find things like this that will happen and you'll have to find ways to work around it. Uh, one way to work around it was possibly using the custom layout with the basic ACF. And so I, I tried that method and I went in here and uh, I tried uh, using just the basic ACF shortcodes and that didn't quite work. And then I tried using it from the basic custom fields configurations and I can show you here, so this is the basic custom fields configuration. And if I look at the short code interface for that, you'll see here under the posts, there's a post custom field. So I can click this to insert and I can just say it was book author. Well, what happens is it ends up returning uh, some extra stuff that returns as an array. And so Beaver Themer doesn't really know what to do with that array. And so it just returns it and it comes back out as a technical array, but it's 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 really 
that's an error in PHP where it converts a real piece of information into a string that says, I'm an array of information. And so this is problematic. Uh, I wasn't able to solve this with Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer, Themer uh, to insert a custom field for this particular type of information. Again, I'm using ACF, I'm using the relationship field type. This may work for post object, it may work for other types of objects, but it did not work for relationship. So uh, just be aware that sometimes you'll be working with your custom fields and you might not find a perfect solution. In some of those cases, you might have to build your own short code and then handle your own data uh, pulling out of the database and rendering it yourself. So th those are challenges. You're going to run into them from time to time. And when you get to singular view, now this is really cool. This is the Beaver Themer um, strong point. I can create a, uh, a special singular template that applies to all of the books. So Beaver Builder has, and this is part of the Beaver Themer, it has Themer layouts. And you can see here, I've got two layouts created and if you go and edit them, you'll be able to customize uh, the location. So this is pretty nice. You can choose different locations and then you can choose uh, specific ones and you can add location rules or add exclusion rules and, and those are handy. Um, this interface is, is, is pretty nice, um, but it only covers singular, so you can't also cover other things. Um, but, but if you look and click add new to a theme or layout, you can actually choose to say uh, whether or not it's uh, in terms of content, if it's archive or a part of the content or whatever. So you, you can separate archive and singular out and that's that's not too difficult. But uh, going back to the editor, uh, the location here in this context is, is pretty spot on simple, not too difficult. Uh, as we get later on into the the, the demo, you'll see how it works with some of the other page builders, which is quite different in some regards. And this is the template view, and you, actually, you can actually preview information about that pod item. Uh, so in that case, it was Republic, but I can switch this to Harry Potter, and it switches everything. So I can see everything in the template as if it were from that one item, which is really nice if you have items that have more information than others. Uh, I'm gonna switch back to the other one just so it's consistent. So. Uh, I've got a post title uh, heading here and I've, I've connected this. So I look here and say connect and it connects. Or I can just put the short code there and I can put extra text around it. So I did that in this case. And I've got, uh, in this case, I'm using the pod short code again. It's super handy just to spit out a bunch of information I want. Uh, and I've, I've done that there. I can use short codes as well, but if I use a pods context, it's great because it handles all the display handling for me. Don't have to worry about any other formatting weirdness. And uh, I've got the post content thing. So this is actually connected to the post content. So any content I have inside of that book will output here. So I can actually support blocks. If I go and edit that, that actual sing, uh, single item, let me go do that here. I'm gonna go edit this book. And here's my content. So I actually do support blocks and I've got all my entry information here. And I can go and add any other types of blocks I may want and that outputs into the singular template. So that's really nice, very flexible. I, I, I really enjoyed that, that fact, be able to mix and match my content, my blocks and my Beaver Builder theme and templating. So that's really cool. And then I went through and, and tried to add a bunch of different sections. So I've got one with just basic custom fields. Again, this is the same way I've, I've, I set up the uh, inserts here using the same structures as, as going into the uh, post cost custom field. And I just typed in the keys. So this, this is what it comes out as uh, for author and then for genre, language and uh, country. I like to return the keys of things like political philosophy is the key of it, but not the label. Uh, but then what happens with some of the other ways is, so this is how it's stored, but these things handle display. So the pods beaver theme add on lets you connect those types of things and it will display the display value, not just the, la the, the value stored in the database, but the value that you want to show. And then we have ones that use just the basic pod short codes. And then again, really super simple. I'm using magic tags, super easy. That's just fantastic. So there's a lot of really cool ways you could do this, uh, but be aware, again, 
you need to make sure you're paying attention to the way you're approaching it. So if you're storing data in the database and you want to display it, you need to make sure it's either stored the way you want it to be displayed if you're going to use basic custom fields, or you're going to make sure that you have some sort of wrapper around it, like some extra short code that will render it and do all the extra work for you. So in the cases of pods and ACF, there's lots of really great tools that work alongside of that to help output it the way you need it to be output. Now let's get to the ACF side of this. So ACF, very similar. Uh, we had uh, basic ACF integration for the basic ones, a uh, easy ACF connectors. You'll notice that these are not the display values. These are not the display values either. And these are not the display values. So ACF had a lot more trouble getting display values. And this can be because uh, the way that the, the, the fields are returned. So if I go look at this and I look at the language and I look at what it's returning, um, I'm actually returning the value. I could return the label. And this is also another important area that ACF does allow you to change the return format. So the return format can be different. I chose value because when I'm working with data, I want to know what the value was. But when it gets to templating with Beaver Themer and Beaver Builder and other page builders, it's not smart enough to handle that labeling for you. So you need to choose a label for it to show up properly on these views. So uh, switching to label would have fixed this, this, and this. It wouldn't fix the author because author, again, is completely messed up at the moment for that relationship field type inside of the builders. Uh, no integration I've seen so far covers that. Uh, it's just one of the problems with the way that that field type works in ACF. So that is Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer. Let's move on to Divi. Uh, 